how clutch was that shot for Kyrie? Do you think this is going to change the trajectory of their season? Now, that might be too big of a statement. But when you look at how close the standings are, I just look at it from the perspective of they're tied with Sacramento and Phoenix, obviously, in that six through eight right there. If they would have lost, now you're eight. You're only two games up on nine and ten. But also, you just beat a a quality opponent. And that, that might be the bigger deal, is the confidence you gain. So maybe it's the standings. Maybe it's Kyrie doing his thing. Or maybe it's just the confidence that you gain from beating a big-time, the defending champs right there. I agree with everything you said. Uh, I don't know if it'll be the defining game that we look back and go, this is the reason the Mavs won the championship this year or made it to the conference finals. But it gives them this situation where you look at right now, if it ended today, you'd be in the play-in, but you'd at least be at home against Phoenix. And if you were to lose that game, hopefully you wouldn't. But if you were to lose that game, then you'd be at home against Golden State or the Lakers to try to make the eighth spot. So that was a big win. It gives you a little bit more separation from Golden State and L.A. Because if there's enough games, if we're saying there's enough games to overtake New Orleans to get to the fifth spot, then there's enough games to follow the 10 spot. You're not going to fall past 10, but you look at it and you say, hey, you still have a chance to get the five or six seed. It gives you a better chance to not fall into that nine or 10 situation where no team has ever gotten out of that. Right. So, so far in the two years that they've done this, the seven and eight seed have ended up making the real playoff. So I, I, I like what I saw. I've been liking what I've been seeing from the Dallas Mavericks. Their effort level is very high. Can can we stop on that for just one second? I want to reset that for people listening because that is something that you say a lot. I'm not, I'm not saying that is incorrect, but can you walk us through like what first locked you in on that and how it went from there? Cause you bring up effort level a lot because I think, the Mavericks have decided as an organization, it's weird because you heard Denver yesterday. I'm just going off reports. They're like they want the one seed right now. They're a half game behind the thunder. Like our goal is to get the one seed. We're not D around here. We want to have the best record in the Western conference. We want to put ourselves in the best position for success. And that would be home court throughout the Western conference. And the Mavericks have seemed to have this attitude for the last few years yeah, you know, all you got to do is be one of the top 10 seeds and you got a chance. You're in the tournament. And it's like, it's the silliest thing right. I've ever heard. And you can see how important it is to the top teams. And then you can see through their actions that when you don't put emphasis on the regular season, you see it in the actions of the players. And it seems like right now, ever since they went through that lull where they were playing some bad basketball, that they have had after that Philadelphia game, if I have my my timeline right, where they were like, uh, who cares? Is the they, Indiana game was rough. Yes. It's like they've cared. It's like, wow, you guys are consistently caring. I don't know. Are they going to care next game? I don't know because a good point. for multiple years now, they haven't cared. And then I hear, well, that's Jason Kidd. The, the regular season is just kind of practices for, like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Why isn't Denver doing that? They actually won the championship. Why aren't they going through a practice session right now? They're actively trying to get the number yeah. one seed. The, the best West. teams that won a championship, they don't just go, well, it's just practice until we get to the postseason. Last year, they practiced themselves out of the playoffs before it even started. So uh, to me, I feel like that's a, a good excuse for an organization. Well, yeah, so we lose 35 games. Well, it was because we were just practicing for 82 of them. Like, no, you, you, you need to take this seriously. And so far, the Mavericks recently has taken this seriously because I think they do look at Phoenix and Sacramento and New Orleans and go, Dude, if we end up in the eight spot, we have put ourselves in a crap position to make the real playoffs, and we've put ourselves in a crap position to possibly get out of the first round. This was a this was this game specifically, Kevin. For me, was it's not the one that changes the trajectory, but maybe okay. it's a one a moment that they believe in and they go, "Hey, okay. we've, we've done this kind of thing before." When I say thing before, is we played hard, we made sure we paid attention to lots of details in this game. There were some details that for about a seven minute span felt like they didn't pay attention to, but we paid attention to a lot of the details of the hustle 
and being you know in right position for box outs and all those things and we punish them in the paint on both ends of the court so we need to ensure that you know, a lot of teams won't be able to handle that if we do it this way because we're built differently but i think the you know the trade really was the thing that changed the trajectory for this team that's brought in, that's a fair point. brought in two guys that are juiced up to be here they're really excited to be part of it and they're going to make their they're going to max out their effort on that end of it so that's the that's the biggest factor in the trajectory of it all but man, beating that team, knowing you can do it, knowing this is the first time, Kevin, this season I've gone. I know the Mavs can play with anybody. Sure, they they can whenever whenever they are actually doing what they did on Sunday. A couple of things. First of all, somebody sent this in. I have to admit, I have not seen this yet. But from the eight zero six, Tim McMahon is retweeting pictures of guys yeah, around funny. the league trying to redo the Kyrie shot in practice. I went outside. Me and my son tried to do it. How did it go? Well, I'm left-handed and didn't make it my three times. <laughs> okay. It's not easy. You couldn't make three layups? No. From no, 18 no. feet, I can, like I said, I could average 100 points a game in the NBA All-Star <laughs> game. Just let me dribble it, and they do, and then just lay it up with nobody blocking the shot, and I got 100 points in an NBA All-Star game. I do have a question, and I don't, I hope this doesn't sound bad. I realize he's better known for his defense, but are you concerned at all about the rotational patterns and usage of Maxi Kleba because it feels like maybe we could start to scale that back just a little bit. I realize he's there for defense, but because of that, he gets a tremendous amount of really open looks. Here's they the drew thing. up a play, Kevin, out of a timeout for him on in this game. They said out of the time, that should we, never we're happen. calling a timeout. Guys, give me the clipboard. I'm going to draw a play up. Maxi was like, all right, guys. They said, we're passing it to you. And he was like, why? And then whenever he shot it, it missed everything. No, I don't want him in whenever he has to have the ball in his hands at any point. I promise I'm not exaggerating this, and I realize he doesn't shoot the ball a ton. Corey, what do you think his field goal percentage is in the month of March? 11. Field goal percentage? Field goal percentage. 35%. It is 11.1%. Oh my God. And his three point percentage is 6.7%. We've gone through this before. That was a sarcastic guess. Well, guess what? That your sarcasm was correct. He gives up making baskets for Lent. We've done this before with him. He's like, I'm just not going to score. And that's, I, I'm not saying you take him off the court because I do see what he brings to it. But to Corey's point, the idea of drawing up an offensive play specifically for him is madness because yeah. he does not want to take that shot. That was a I, waste of a timeout. I don't know if they – I can see your point, Corey. I just think that he's so wide open. It's not that they drew up the play. They're just like, hey, we're getting double teamed. Nobody wants to guard this guy. It was kind of like the other night, Josh Giddy. They're like, they decided we're just going to dare him to shoot a three-pointer. And then when he made a couple, they took – is a horrible decision. But then like, let's just take Gafford out and play small ball. And I'm like, oh, God, Jason Kidd. But I think when it comes to Maxi Kleba, he's a valuable piece, to your point, for 10 to 20 yes. minutes a night. Yes. But he's using him as a finishing five. And I don't think that's going to change. And I don't like that breakdown of the 10 to 20. And I'm not pumped about it. But here's where I'll give Jason Kidd an excuse. Tim Hardaway has been playing horrible, and he can't play defense to save his life. He just either refuses to do it or is just really bad at it. He's I'm not sure which right one. Now. And then he he can't make a basket, and you don't know when he's going to get out of the Joey Gallo slump. He will. And he can't pass sometimes. Sorry. Well, he can't out of bounds. He's really good at finding out of bounds. <laughs> like, if you're trying to pass it out of bounds, he was A-plus yesterday in that stretch where he's like, hey, there's... There's old Derek Lively. What if I just throw this to Mark Cuban? I'm like, no, he's out of bounds. That's not a good pass. Uh, but I think that he's a little bit limited right now. I'll give Jason Kidd an excuse. P.J. Washington can't make a shot to save his life. That has been tough. Tim Hardaway too. is playing bad basketball on a consistent basis Great. now. And then you look at kind of where you're at, and you're like, okay, so if Josh Green's hurt, Tim Hardaway Jr. can't make a basket to save his life and doesn't like to play defense. And then P.J. Washington, who's playing really hard. I'm not questioning P.J. Washington's effort. But he's not making shots I mean, either. he's getting open and can't make it. So I guess he's like, I'll just put Kleba out there. Kleba doesn't want to shoot the ball. It's just that the other team is like, hey, out of all of our options here, what if we just don't guard him? And then Kleba's like, crap. I, he's like, reluctantly, I have to shoot it. And whenever you're like, oh, crap, I have to shoot it, you're going to miss 
according to his stats, over 90% of the time. He is one of 15 from three this month. And I bet the vast majority of those were good Wide looks. Open. They were looks that you're like, you get that look, you take that shot. And then you see the outcome and you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's not a shooter. He knows he's not a shooter. That is it's fair. just He's also not a roller. He can't do what Lively or Gafford does. So his his spot on the court is stand at the three-point line. And if you're wide open, you have to take it. Because if you don't take it, and, he, and sometimes he doesn't. And it really screws things up. Because he gets the ball with, let's say, 10 seconds on the shot clock. And then they're like, they're not coming out to guard him. They're not closing out on him. And he's like, I don't want to shoot it, guys. He knows that he can't yes. make it. So he's like, I can't make it. I don't want to shoot it. And then he passes it to Luca with six on the shot clock as he's double teamed. And they're not going back to cover Kleba. So then Luca's like, crap, dude. Like, we can't get a better look than that. You got to take that shot. The Mavericks have won five of their last six. You look ahead at the schedule. You really feel like they should win these next three. I, I realize that is not a given. And don't, don't misconstrue this. San Antonio has been playing better. I'm not saying that that means they're not still one of the worst teams in the NBA, but they have been playing better. Wemby might be runner-up for Defensive Player of the Year, but you've got San Antonio. You've got the two straight home and, home and away against Utah. These feel like three wins you need to run off, and then you're going to come up against the back-to-back -back Sacramento that... You need one of those. I, I mean, and you look at where they are in the standings, and this very much feels like it could be the difference between... You have to play in that extra play in tournament, or do you not? Yeah, and I don't and want to. 0 2 against Sacramento. Ooh. So if they lose one of them, Sacramento has the tiebreaker, and they probably will win one of them. They're both at home, but if you can get one of them, at least that gives you the opportunity to maybe have a better record at the end of the season. But if you lose both of them, it's going to be really tough with about eight games left to make up that two game kind of losing streak and with not having a tiebreaker, but looking at the schedule, because I have it pulled up, they have the opportunity to win 10 more games. Mm -hmm. And that would get them to 49 wins. And I think I said 50. I but, think that takes the five. Maybe, seed for you. maybe that gets you to five or six. Usually you have to get 50 wins to be a top six seed. If yeah. you go just look at the history of the NBA and the Western Conference, you need to have 50 wins to have a top six spot, but maybe 49 does it. Yeah. La I know last year was a very strange year for the Western Conference where you could have you could have gotten in. Because they beat the, the crap out of each other so much yeah. again. And, and, like, there's and, been seasons where all eight teams had 50 wins. Like the eight seed had a 50. Really? Yeah. Wow. I mean, I can't remember what year it was, but that's just when the Western Conference is like that. Like, and that was when the East was just like everybody had 20 wins. It was before the play wins. That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd have a team that was 36 and 46, and they were the seven seed they over there. They got a home there. game. <laughs> uh, I, I, think 40, I think 49 gets it done to where you want to be. Absolutely. And by the is way. This, is this that point? <laughs> Oh no! Is oh this, dear! Is this oh point where you dear! Choke? Are you are you saying Corey, the Mavericks are, are okay? going to choke? Is this that point in the season? Were you trying to say that? Uh, what? That they're going to choke? choke? No, cough no, it up. Cough. Is this the point in the season where you start going treat it like a playoff game yes. or treat it? It's a playoff environment. And I mean, look, if you not that the San Antonio or Utah will be that, but Sacramento definitely feels starting that way. with San Francisco. If you want to say, hey guys. You got these next three games. Let's still try to win them. Obviously, you mean Sacramento. I, yeah. You said San Francisco. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, Sacramento. That's Golden State. Yeah. Sacramento. You do have Golden State on the schedule two more times. You do, and you better win those games too. Is you start with that Sacramento run, and it feels like playoff. Yeah. All the let's rest go ahead of the and get in that mentality now, boys. Do you think they will? I know they can. Do you think they will? I will say this: if Kyrie decides that it's time to think that way, the team will think that way. I think I, I think Kyrie is the, is the one that gets that has pulse on everybody else in that locker All right. room. So I'm going to go, I know it's not say your opinion and then pick a cowboy or something. Um, that is not how that goes at are all. Are you talking about combo platter? <laughs> yeah. If they can make it to the sixth seed at the end of the year and it's against Minnesota, I think they go to the second round. Oh, now, I don't know who's going to take Oklahoma City or Denver if they're going to be one or two. I don't think I there's no way in the world I'm picking them unless Jokic gets hurt. Yeah, I'm picking Denver to win that series. But 
I look at it and I look at Minnesota and that Carl Anthony Towns injury and yep. if he's going to come back and the way Rudy Gobert has been taken advantage of his whole career in the playoffs, no matter how good of a regular season he's had. Anthony Edwards is great and trending towards superstar if he's not there already. But I just think if you can get to the sixth seed and you get to play Minnesota, I think you match up against them where you have your two big guys, you have the athleticism, you have Luka, who's better than anybody on the court, and you have Kyrie, who's playing at a very high level. In fact, yesterday, did they say something? This is the most games he's played in a row since 2016. Kyrie? Kyrie, I oh. think they said during the telecast last night, however many games he's played in a row without oh. missing a game is the most he's ever played in a row since 2016 in wow. his career. So if he's if he can stay healthy, Let's keep piling that number up. Reddit right now or last year said he hadn't played more than eleven games in a row in five years. So that okay. was last year. So I, yeah, yeah, wow. I mean, I don't know if I'm correct about that or not, but I remember whoever the bald guy was with Richard Jefferson said something like that. Just and just think, if Dwight Powell hadn't fallen on his legs, maybe it'd be more. You know, maybe and we don't have more. to worry about that ever again. <laughs> That's what you keep those goggles what on and think. keep cheering. That's what you We've think. seen even Jason Kidd knows after playing him 48 minutes a night in the regular season, he sits him out in the playoffs.